The Switch Lite is here. If you aren't familiar with it, it's a smaller, portable-only Switch, meaning it can't dock and connect to your TV. Nintendo sent one over to me, and I've been playing it for the last couple of days. As Andre mentioned in our original Nintendo Switch review, having a short amount of time to review a console can feel a bit crazy, since its value won't be revealed until weeks, months, or even years later. I'm not under such constraints with the Switch Lite, because at its core, it's the same Switch experience we've come to know and love over the last two and a half years only smaller and without the whole switching thing. That is to say, the Switch Lite runs the same firmware and games as the original. There are no additional software features, themes, or anything to differentiate the Lite from its larger sibling apart from the hardware itself, which is what I'll be talking about for the majority of this review. At first sight, the Switch Lite is stunning. It reminds me of the huge design leap between the original DS and the DS Lite. The sleek design on the light makes the original Switch feel chunky and dated. The Switch Lite comes in three colors, gray, turquoise, and yellow. Nintendo sent me the yellow version, and I love how it looks. The yellow is bright and vibrant, but not enough to distract me from what's happening on the screen as I play. I had a chance to see the other two colors in person at PAX West this year, and I think the yellow is the loudest of the three. The turquoise, which our own John received, is a bit more subdued in comparison, but looks really nice as well. To achieve its small design, Nintendo reduced the screen size on the light to 5.5 inches, down from the original's 6.2, shaving off just over a half inch. Games look amazing on this smaller Switch, noticeably better than they do on the original design, thanks to its resolution staying the same, meaning you get more pixels per inch on the screen even if everything, like text, is a bit smaller. I didn't have any issues reading anything on screen either. Everything on the Switch Lite appears crisp, even in sunlight or dimly lit areas. The screen, however, wasn't the only thing changed to reduce the console's size. The Lite eschews Joy-Con in favor of a permanently attached set of built-in controls like a Game Boy or Nintendo DS. Everything here is the same as the original, save for the addition of a D-pad. The face buttons are a bit larger and feel more comfortable to press than the Joy-Con's clicky small buttons. I like them a lot and I hope we get Joy-Cons in the future that use this button design. What I dislike, however, is the built-in D-pad. It works well enough for games like Breath of the Wild where you don't have to use complex commands on it, but it fails miserably in games like Ultra Street Fighter 2. The D-pad seems to have issues registering diagonal presses correctly. Anytime I'd push up and forward, I'd go either up or forward, but seldom both. Having cut my teeth on Street Fighter 2 on the SNES, I have little patience for D-pads that don't work in fighting games, and I'm sad to report that the Switch Lite is saddled with one. Conversely, the Lite's D-pad is just fine in 2D platformers, even in the most rigorous of levels. I should know. I tested Andre's ridiculous Super Meat Boy Forever inspired level on the light, and was able to beat it with the same level of frustration anybody would experience when faced with my boss's sadistic level design choices. At the end of the day, there's still no comparison here. In the digital control department, the Switch Lite is far better than the original Switch. Any D-pad, regardless of quality, is better than those four directional buttons on every left Joy-Con. The outer shell of the light has a fine, textured feel to it. In my hands, it feels a little more grippy than the original Switch, which should help people who have problems with the device slipping during gameplay. It's also easier to hold for extended periods thanks to its lower weight. While playing the Switch Lite, I'm reminded of just how special this console is. When I see a game like Mario Odyssey running on such a small device, I'm still blown away by what Nintendo has managed to create. In a way, the Lite kind of renews that feeling for me. Seeing something even smaller still play full AAA console quality titles is simply jaw-dropping. After playing with it for extended periods, the Switch Lite is mostly great for long handheld play sessions, but in some games, such as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, my right hand began to cramp from holding down the A button for long periods of time. I don't have particularly large hands, but it got me wondering, how would it feel for someone with much smaller hands? Fortunately, I had just the right person hanging out with me. My six-year-old daughter. She already has a Switch of her own, but once she saw me playing with the Switch Lite, it was like she forgot all about hers. I had her take on a few GPs in Mario Kart and play some Minecraft on the Lite, and well, I'm pretty sure she decided my review unit is hers now. She told me she had no issues holding or playing with it and that it felt easier to use than her Switch. When I told her it wouldn't work on her TV, she didn't really care at all because in her own words, it's cute. She was also really quick to note that it wasn't very heavy, which is something I didn't think she paid much attention to until we talked about the light. However, the Switch Lite did have to drop some features along the way to shed that weight. The light ditches a few things current Switch owners might miss. As I said before, the biggest omission, of course, is the ability to dock. The Switch is named for its ability to be either a handheld or a home console, depending on your mood. 
and this version can't do that. So if playing on the TV is your main method of play, the Switch Lite probably isn't for you. And in case you're holding out hope for a light dock later on, don't. The hardware seems to be incapable of connecting to an external display. The other things missing from the light aren't as consequential. The IR camera is missing, which is used in just a handful of games like Labo. There's no kickstand or brightness sensor, and HD rumble is out. In fact, there's no rumble at all. Most of these issues can be worked around, though. If you need that IR camera, the light can still pair to Joy-Con wirelessly, and accessory makers are already making Switch Lite cases that include a kickstand, too. And if you're the single Joy-Con multiplayer type, you lose the ability to do that thanks to the light's built-in controllers as opposed to the removable Joy-Con on the original. There's no way to get auto brightness back as that function requires a sensor the Switch Lite got rid of, but not to worry Splatoon fans, while the light strips out most Joy-Con features, gyroscopic aiming is still intact, meaning you can splat away without having to rely on analog sticks. With the hardware differences out of the way, now's a good time to talk about if you should actually purchase one of these. And the short answer is, it depends. The Switch Lite is the best way to play Switch games portably. It's lighter, it has a nicer but slightly smaller screen, and it fits in a bag or pocket far easier. It has all the same great games as the original Switch, access to the same online features and eShop, and the same horsepower, albeit with better battery life. You aren't getting a downgrade experience by playing on the Switch Lite versus the original, as long as you only care about playing in handheld mode. If you have a Switch and don't play it docked, as about 30% of all Switch users do according to Nintendo, then the Switch Lite is a no-brainer. If you do play in TV mode, or you purchased the recently released Switch V2, things get a lot more complicated and fast. I travel quite often, and I could see the Lite as my second console, one I take on the road with me while my main console stays at home. Fortunately, Nintendo has made that somewhat painless. If you don't feel like making the light your daily driver, you can sign into your Nintendo account and grab your games off the eShop without any issues, but you will need to authenticate every few hours to keep playing if you go that route, since only your main Switch can play your games offline. I'd go further in depth, but we already have an entire other video discussing just how to use your digital games and saves on your light, so I recommend you check that out. There's a link to it in the description down below. In a sense, the answer to this question boils down to one thing. Do you want to play your Switch games on a TV? If that answer is no, I wholeheartedly recommend you pick up a Switch Lite. It's a great way to experience the Switch's ever-expanding library and save yourself a hundred bucks in the process. After just a few short days with the Switch Lite, I can see it becoming a mainstay in my travel kit. Its beautiful screen, colorful design, and included D-pad make me wish it was the design template for the original Switch. Sure, the D-pad could be a bit better but anything is better than the Joy-Con's directional buttons. If it weren't for its inability to be played on a TV, I'd replace my original Switch with the Lite without a second thought. The Switch Lite is a great entry point to the Switch ecosystem if you haven't yet jumped in, and it's worth considering if you already have a Switch but want to go all in on portable play. I like it a lot, but I hope that down the line we get a device that fuses the design sensibilities of the Lite with the practicality of the original. And that wraps it up for our review of the Nintendo Switch Lite. As always, thank you so much for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for more reviews just like this one. Make sure to click that notification bell to be notified every time we upload a new video, and we'll see you next time.